Hey there, welcome. My name is Farron and I'm a sixth year seventh grade math teacher in the state of Florida. I can pick you up when you're heading down. When it all just sucks, I'll be your Charlie Brown. Today we're gonna to talk about my brand, myself as a teacher, and exactly what is Marigold Magic. So the brand name I came up with a couple of years ago was Marigold Magic. And before I can explain what that is, we have to rewind a little bit to my first year, not my first, my second year of teaching, but it was my first year at the current school I'm at now. I have only been at two schools in my entire teaching career. And the first school I was at, I met Kimberly Coombs, one of my best friends, and she is a teacher companion of Marigold, which I'll explain further. But our second year of teaching, we went over to a new school together. And at that school, they had brought in all of the first year teachers, period, and all of the first year teachers at that location who were their first time teaching at this school. And we came in like a week before the all the rest of the staff came. So at this meeting, they gave us an article called Find Your Marigold. This article can be found on Cult of Pedagogy. It's by Jennifer Gonzalez, and I'll link it below. And in the article, it talks about companion planting, and it compares the idea of companion planting to basically planting yourself to a teacher in your school, in your county, wherever you can find said marigold. So I'm gonna read you guys this article and talk about step by step, not the whole thing. I'm gonna talk about piece by piece what I got out of it and why my brand Marigold Magic began. The first intro paragraph says this. Welcome to your first year of teaching. This year will test you more intensely than just about anything you've done up to now. It will deplete all your energy, bring you to tears and make you question every talent or skill you thought you had. But all these tests, if you approach them the right way, will leave you better and stronger than you are today. Advice is available everywhere you look, and some of it is very good. Still, with everything you have to do right now, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer volume of it all. And the fact is, a lot of those tips won't work very well if you fail to follow this one essential rule, surround yourself with good people, period. That is the essence of the article and it compares it to companion planting, which we'll talk about in a second. By finding the positive, supportive, energetic teachers in your school and sticking close to them, you can improve your job satisfaction more than with any other strategy. And your chances of excelling in this field will skyrocket. Just like a young seedling, Growing in a garden, thriving in your first year depends largely on who you plant yourself next to. So I'm reading this as my second year teaching, first year at this new school with my best friend sitting right next to me. And we automatically are already like, we're each other's marigolds. We surround ourselves with each other. <laughs> I was so intrigued at this point. I was like, all right, let's continue to read. So it says, many experienced gardeners follow a concept called companion planting. Placing certain vegetables and plants near each other to improve growth for one or both plants. In the article, it gives an example of a rose and how you can place garlic next to the rose specifically to help it repel bugs, fungi, and to help the rose grow. So this is a common thing in gardening. Gardeners will plant specific plants. <laughs> I keep saying plant over and over again. They will plant specific plants next to each other in order to help one of them or both of them grow together, right? But the marigold, as we continue to read, is one of the best companion plants. It says, it protects a wide variety of plants from pests and harmful weeds. If you plant a marigold beside most any garden vegetables, that vegetable will grow big and strong and healthy, protected and encouraged by its marigold. So like I was saying, the rose, you need to specifically plant garlic next to it so some companion plants can only work with a few other garden plants but the marigold like it said works with a wide variety of plants which makes it special then it goes into comparing marigolds and the gardening to teachers at a school it says marigolds exist in our schools as well encouraging supporting and nurturing growing teachers on their way to maturity if you can find at least one marigold in your school and stay close to them, you will grow. Find more than one and you will positively thrive. Few teachers will be lucky enough to be planted close to a marigold. Being assigned to one as a mentor, co-teacher, or team leader will be rare. 
you will have to seek them out. They may be on the other side of the building, out of your grade or subject area, or otherwise less convenient to reach than others. If your school is especially toxic, you might have to find your marigolds in another school or even online. Yes, me. It says, make the effort, it's worth the trouble. So that is where marigold magic began because that gave me the desire to want to help new teachers just in case they were not able to have a marigold like I luckily was in Kimberly. And I now have so many marigolds. We have a whole quad of marigolds <laughs> at my school and it is just a great feeling to have that support you need and those people that you can turn to on days where you're like, why am I still here? What am I doing? <laughs> Which I have those days still. I wanted to be a marigold to those who could not find one. And so began <laughs> marigold magic. Now the magic came in because I'm one for, what is that word? When it repeats alliteration, Kimberly would be so proud. <laughs> I think that's it. Hold on, let me Google it. Uh, li yeah. Ooh, I'm out here. So Marigold's Magic M&M, which is what came M&M crew. So on my YouTube channel for years now, I have been calling my subscribers, my family, my garden of Marigold's M&M crew. The word magic came from like, you know, when you go to Disney or you're in a magical place, you feel enchantment and just happiness. And I thought that by attaching Marigold to magic, I am creating that enchantment or happiness of being a Marigold and or finding a Marigold. So whenever you are are the marigold and you spread the marigold magic you feel great after helping someone else or if you are in need of a marigold and you get that marigold magic love you feel great and you feel that happiness from the marigold effect which i am so grateful for this article i am so grateful for jennifer for writing it because without it i don't know <laughs> i don't know where marigold magic would have been like this article literally changed my life I want a whole tattoo. I want to do big things with Marigold Magic. I'm so excited that you are here with me. Subscribe so you can join the family and become part of the Eminem crew. But yeah, that is Marigold Magic. Now for part two, which is about more of me as a teacher, I'm going to be answering questions from a throwback hashtag on YouTube called hashtag I teach too. It's 11 questions originally written by Megan at Too Cool for Middle School and I will have all of them timestamped below just so you can skip around and whatever questions you know or don't know you want to get to, go ahead and do that. Starting off with question number one, what do you teach and where? So as I've already stated in my intro, I teach seventh grade math. I've only taught seventh grade, well, that's a lie. I did teach three years of eighth grade, but it was only one or two classes that I had, but I have always taught seventh grade math. We're getting new standards this upcoming fall, so I'm super excited about them. Now I'm answering more than just the question is asking, but that is in Florida. I teach in South Florida and we are getting new standards this upcoming fall that I'm super excited about. I'm super excited to create content and I have a lot of resources coming to Teachers Pay Teachers, so stay tuned for that. Question number two, how long have you been teaching? Again, like I stated in my intro, this is my sixth year of teaching. I absolutely love it um, for the most part. If you are a teacher watching this video and you have taught in these past two years, you know the struggle. I'm not gonna lie, I have thought of career changes a couple of times, but I just love teaching so much. I cannot see myself as anything else. Actually, I have seen myself as other things and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. They make way more money, thought of way more, appreciated way more, but teaching is where my heart is at. You feel me? So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Question number three. Did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? Yes. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher from when I could write because I still have books that my mom has saved from what you know like in elementary school you make those portfolios of like all these different things what I want to be when I grow up all, all of them questions I can't think of anything else <laughs> but I, I have written in there in my five-year-old kindergarten handwriting that I wanted to be a teacher back then I wanted to be an elementary school teacher and then I grew up and I was like mm, mm, no thank you and then when I was in high school, I was part of this program called UTAP, which stands for Urban Teacher Academy Program for all four years. And basically, 
it's like mini college education program. We go over to the elementary school closest to us once a week and we teach the kids there. We talk about lesson planning, classroom management, all of that. And I did that for four years of high school. And then I went to college to be an education major, which I did not. I actually did not graduate with a teaching degree, but here I am. We could talk about that another time. I thought I could be a doctor. It didn't work out well. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> but let's move on question number four what is your typical teacher ootd ootd is outfit of the day for those who don't know and basically i live in a teacher tee by ambrose design and prints which is exactly like this one this one says wild about teaching basically have two drawers full of her t-shirts i will link her information below as well I love her t-shirts. So I am in an ADP, most of the time, t-shirt and jeans, any type of bottom, like jeans, basically jeans. Uh, my favorite jeans are American Eagle jeans. So I have like five pairs of the same black ones that I just wear. And then I have a cardigan that I wear on top of it every day, basically. If I'm not in that, I'm in a hoodie. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Question number five is what do you usually bring for lunch? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> My marigolds get on me about this. I don't bring lunch majority of the time. And if I do bring lunch, I don't eat it. And then by fifth or sixth period, I'm starving and asking my kids for snacks because my lunch that I do bring on maybe five out of 180 days needs to be heated up. So I can't even eat it at the time I'm hungry. I'm working on that. New year, new goals. We gonna see. I just don't have time. I literally have six periods of classes and I have 30 minutes of lunch which 10 of those minutes requires me to walk my kids back and forth so I'm like there's other things I feel like I can be doing in that space where I just forget to eat and by the time four o'clock comes y'all starving I'm starving so I need to learn to eat and find the time to eat so I'm not like headache dying starving at four o'clock anyway question number six what is one of your favorite books about teaching? Oh, Grit. Duh. I don't know if that counts. Grit by Angela Duckworth. I don't know if that's a teaching book, but it is what inspired the way that I teach. And I use the acronym GRIT in my classroom to structure my instruction. <laughs> to structure the way that I teach my kids, which if you've seen any of my classroom setup vlogs, you've seen it. I've talked about it. I haven't gotten into full explanation, but I will. It's on the agenda for 2022. Um, so I don't know if that counts. If that doesn't count, I would say, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really, the only other book I think I've fully read, like I start all these books and I never finish them. I oh, struggle my life, but is the first days of school. And to be honest, I have never even finished that fully. I've gotten very close, but I have never fully like read the last page, the last word on the last page. So we're going to go with Grit by Angela Duckworth. I'll link that in the description below. <laughs> Next is what is one of your favorite teacher movies? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I, I. I don't even know if I can remember a teacher movie I've seen. Oh, I mean, Freedom Riders. I love Freedom Riders. Um, and I think that's the only teacher show I can think of. Oh, does this count? It's not a movie. Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. I don't know. If we're going to say movie, I guess I'll go with Freedom Riders. If Boy Meets World counts, that surpasses Freedom Riders. But yeah, <laughs> that's my answer. Question number eight, who was your favorite teacher? Mr. O, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. O Chacher, the best teacher I've ever had. I also had him in third grade because we used to split and I used to go to him for math. And he was just everything I aspired to be as a teacher. I'm not sure if he's teaching anymore, to be honest. I don't know, actually. I have him as a Facebook friend, but I don't be on Facebook like that. <laughs> I know for a fact he doesn't live here or teach at the school I went to, but he was phenomenal. He was the perfect combination of like, you know that fine line that I sometimes struggle with, with with like your relationship with the kids and like how you don't want to be their friend, but you want them to know that you care and that you're there for them. He was the perfect balance of that. Like, you know, like I knew he cared about us deeply, 
but I knew he was my teacher. Like, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but he was the perfect combination of that. We always had a good time in his class. I knew that he cared for me and all of the other students in the classroom. And I know that is why I learned so much that year because like we've learned as teachers, kids don't learn from those that they don't like. So make sure that you, I'm getting ahead of myself because that's one of the questions I think if I remember correctly. Question number nine, who are some of your favorite teacher YouTubers, Instagrammers, Snapchatters? Wow. Um, I don't know. Who are some? What is the definition of some? Is that one? That's not one. It's not two. A two is couple. A few is three. We're going to go with four. So my favorite four YouTubers slash Instagrammers. Ooh, this is hard. Okay, so we're going to split this in half. We're going to do two Instagrammers and two YouTubers. My two favorite Instagrammers, I feel, are the Sassy Teacher and Mediacs in the Middle. I love both of them. They are both middle school teachers. One teaches science. The other one actually now does teach science. She used to teach math. Um, so those are my two favorite Instagrammers and my two favorite YouTubers. I mean, the OG, everybody know Pocket Full of Primary. I grew up on her stuff. I say grew up. She got me through my first couple years of teaching and who else? This is a tough one. Oh, Elementary in the Mitten. I love her. I love her. Um, I feel like we have the same energy. Um, both of our favorite colors, yellow. I think that's a favorite color. I mean, her channel, yellow. And Kia. Oh, I forgot about Kia. Oh, and Haley. Haley teachers. Wow, there's a lot. I, I can't pick. I'll just <laughs> have a list of all my favorites in the description below. I have not watched YouTube in a really long time. So as you can see, the last time I posted anything on YouTube was September. That's the last time I posted anything on Instagram too. So I'm forgetting my faves. Anyway, like I said, this year has been a struggle. moment of silence <laughs> okay anyway question number 10 what is one of your best classroom management tips this is what i was talking about earlier when i said i was getting ahead of myself when i was talking about student relationships my number one classroom tip classroom management tip is to build a relationship with your students that can save anything in a classroom like like I said earlier, your kids will not learn from people who they don't like. So that's one. If you don't have a relationship, their desire and motivation to learn is going to be, I mean, they'll still learn if they, like, if you don't not not have a relationship and they don't hate you, I suppose. But their desire and motivation to do better, to grow, will become more as they develop a relationship with you. Like, my kids are not afraid to ask me anything. They are. I can see as the days go by and our relationship develops, I can see they'll, they'll do anything for you. <laughs> I don't know how to put this into words, but they will do anything for you. I mean, these kids will do anything for you if they love you. I am telling you, they will act angelic. They will not embarrass you. Like, you know, that mom who's like, you better not embarrass me in public. You can act out in the classroom. I don't care what you do, but you better not embarrass me out in public. They're really good at not doing that. <laughs> And then I just be mad at them in the classroom. But I feel like this year has been hard for me to develop relationships with my kids because of COVID and me wanting to not get too close or like, I don't know. But just my my level of passion this year has been very low. And I feel like this year's kids can see it because I am not that gung-ho teacher I was a couple years ago. Like, if you're a teacher, you know what I mean. Like, this year is hard it's worse than last year it legit is worse than last year actually i don't know it has its pro it has its differences between last year and this year this year i think it's harder because you are in the space with the kids but the feeling is still the same like i still i still feel very like i can't breathe i don't know if i'm explaining this right anyway that's beyond the question moving on the last question of the i teach to tag is what is one reason you decided to become a teacher that's a good question I'm not even sure um, because like I said, I've wanted to be a teacher for so long. I don't know. Um, I can tell you the reason why I stay is because I just love my kids. I, I don't know. I love what I do. I love the impact I make on students. I love the relationships I build with my students. I have students who I still talk to 
and I have since my first year of teaching we follow each other on Instagram I keep up with their life they're about to graduate and everything and I still am involved and I just saw two of them at the mall the other day and it was like they had never left my classroom six years ago so I just love that aspect of my job and I think well I know that is the only thing that's keeping me motivated to stay in this career I just love my kids <laughs> I have a student from last year who I'm super close to because of the whole COVID thing. Um, only a few kids came in that year. So those kids I got super close to. One of them, I go to their house for dinner every now and then. So it's just the relationships I build with my kids, which it goes back to my classroom management tip. That's why I do what I do. And that's all, folks. <laughs> so that's me. That's Marigold Magic, and I hope this compels you to become a part of the M&M crew. And actually, I want to hear the answer to number 11 from you. What made you decide to become a teacher, or what keeps you going every day to stay in this education career? Thank you so much for being here today. I love you so much. Don't forget to spread some Marigold Magic.